what I really wanted to mention, nearly forgot to, is uh, in the case of nuclear isotopes, you know, something mm -hmm. else becomes possible. You mm -hmm. know, how these blocks were moved, because that's, that's a big question. We have these multi-ton blocks. How the hell were they moved 500 miles from Aswan Quarry, you know, all the way to Giza Plateau, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is, you know, that Earth is not just, uh, you know, a planet. It's a planet that has an electric field. Mm. You know, we have thunderstorms, right? Mm. You know, Tesla was all about electricity. It's not uh, controversial at all that we live in a planet that produces a pretty strong electric field, meaning the surface of the planet we stand on is negatively charged normally, normally. And the ionosphere is positively charged. And we live in this, you know, pretty strong electric field that discharges itself, you know, during thunderstorms. We all know that. What we underappreciate is that we can put this electric field to good work. And in fact, there are species of spiders on this planet that can sense the electric field. And when they detect, because it, it fluctuates during the day, but when it's at, at the strongest, they can sense it. And then, then they deploy the piece of spider web that is uh, negatively charged. And then negative charges repulse each other. So the charge of the ground, which is negative, pushes on the charge that the spider deploys, which is also negative. And then mm. the spider floats, levitates, literally. Wow. And the way they discovered it is that spiders were found on ships, like oceanic ships, like thousands and thousands of miles away. And it was baffling, you know, scientists, you know, how these spiders end up there. So they collected a bunch of them and they put them in a tin can, basically, with electric fields applied. And when they started, you know, raising the raising the uh, strengths of the field, at some point, spiders' behavior changed. They sensed that the field was strong enough, so they started deploying, deploying the spider webs. Mm. And when the field was strong enough, they started floating. And then when they killed the field, you know, the, the spiders uh, basically fell, fell to the floor. Wow. Yeah, this is a fairly recent discovery. It's, it's not controversial. It is very well known. Yeah, these are the spiders. Exactly. Yep. So you see nature takes advantage of the fact that the earth is electrically charged mm -hmm. and these clever spiders they use it to float defeating the gravity mm -hmm. but not in a fantastic way just relying on sure. electrostatic so once i started thinking about isotopes about the first thing that crossed my mind you know shit you take these beta emitters and what they do they emit copious amount of negative charge so if you produce these isotopes and let's say you put them on a craft mm -hmm. you know the craft would float in uh, Earth's, you know, gravity, just because the static charge on the craft is pushing against the static charge of the Earth, and you get this, you know, repulsion of Coulomb charges, and mm. the craft would levitate. You know, granted, you'll need to replenish the charge. So either you have a generator, or you have this radioactive isotope that's continually emitting beta particles, and then it becomes possible, you know, to to apply this isotope, let's say, to a stone you wish to transport. And all of a, a sudden, you know, the stone would lose its weight. But not, you know, because of, of some magic or whatnot, but because this isotope decays and charges the stone to an immense, you know, negative charge to where the field of the earth, you know, pushes it up, you know, the electric field of the right. earth. Right. Same as in the case of the spider. Except in the case of the spider, you don't need you know, nuclear science because spider weighs, you know, next to nothing, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, a huge giant stone block would require a substantial charge and you can develop that charge by you know coating you know, let's say the block with this you know nuclear isotope that's right. producing beta particles and wow. it's producing them as it decays so at some point it will wear off and the stone you know would settle so you could but how would you move it i mean you just push on it it's, so you could hover it and just push it right basically K wow. kind of like a ship you know a ship weighs who knows how many tons yeah. and it's not that difficult you know to push it off the dock mm -hmm. so i think it's the same idea interesting and, and maybe uh, you know the side effect was that the stones were you know turning softer in the process just because the crystalline wow. lattice was overwhelmed mm -hmm. but i think you know if we're we're fantasizing about you know some advanced civilization you know conducting megalithic megalithic construction i think that's how they would do it 
because it's uh, entirely you know within the realm of possible and you know the spiders show us how it's done yeah but the uh, even there are some places on earth like Gobi Desert, where the field, the electric field, is so strong naturally that if you go there, you know the hair will what stand desert? on your head. Gobi, it's in Where's Mongolia. That? Oh, okay. It's China, Mongolia. I think it's spelled G O B Y, mm -hmm. or G B G O B I. Mm -hmm. And and there are videos that people post when they go there. You know, the field is so strong. You know, your hair stands, and you hear crackling. Wow. And and there is a danger that you're going to be struck by lightning. Oh, really? Yes, because you know the, the field is so strong. Wow. Is it like super high altitude? I don't know about the altitude. Mm -hmm. But, uh, the, you know, it's known phenomenon and it's, you know, considered hell's heathered because, you know, of, of the uh, discharge that, that might materialize and mm -hmm. you'll get hit by, by lightning. But that's what also happens, you know, during a, a thunder storm, right? Mm -hmm. So you have these yes. charges that, that discharge naturally. And in fact, you know, part of the reason why, you know, why clouds hang in the air is the droplets are statically charged so they're floating in the earth's electric field you know this entire cloud right. is pushed up by the electric field of the earth and the reason you have rain is because you know these charges they cancel each other and all of a sudden cloud you know drops right and and basically becomes rain so this is all like part of uh, you know natural processes that we are aware of but we're not you know using them for engineering for whatever reason and that's uh, something I'm very excited to mm. to use for engineering purposes because all of a sudden, you know, there is an idea of how you make you know things float, like in Star Wars, except you know you don't use magic. Or how you don't, could you go about testing something like this? Um, actually, uh, there is a way. And funny enough, uh, in my in the course of my nuclear research, you know, one of the offshoots of my you know reactor development, I worked with oil. I, I think I mentioned. Yeah that uh, my reactor is filled with uh, is uh, with mineral oil and when you run that oil through uh, dielectric tubes like teflon you have friction of one dielectric against the other one and uh, that's a principle of one graph generator where a belt rubs against a roller and the charges separate and you have like massive charge build up and when i uh, yeah, that that wasn't my plan. But you know, when I for the first time I, I powered my reactor and I needed to filter the oil, and the oil went through the filter and through these tubes, so much charge was developed that you know the surface of oil inside my reactor curved like a like a moon crescent. So it wasn't flat anymore. It was like very very concave because oil was clinging to the sides of the metal vessel because there was so much charge in the oil. Wow. And on some of my uh, fittings so some of my pipes were metal and some of my pipes were just regular hydraulic lines which are you know rubber mm -hmm. and there was so much potential built up over them that you know a spark was jumping on the outside surface and i couldn't uh, figure this out so i'm pumping and i see this you know crackling and it flashes of light like what the hell is going on and then i realized oh shit, you know i'm developing this super strong you know electro electrostatic charges just by pushing oil you know through a dielectric medium and I thought, shit, you know, I could use it, you know, to charge something, you know, like I just described and, and see if I can defeat the gravity just by compensating it with electrostatic repulsion. Mm. And that's on my uh, to-do list to try, you know, later this year or maybe, you know, sometime next year because it's uh, an easy thing to do, uh, you know, if you know how to push oil <laughs> right. through, you know, through plastic tubes, basically. Wow. So, so yeah, maybe I'll be able to get levitation to work if I don't get infusion to work. But, you know, that's one of the things that interest me. And, and this somehow all, you know, meshes within, with ancient history because one thing uh, kind of excites the thinking in the other direction. And you start thinking, well, how they could have moved stone. And then you realize, oh, they could have used, you know, static electricity mm. 